Forward. By Paul Demi Eboli. Member of the Institut de France. Professor at the College de France. Director of Buddhist Studies at the School. Of Higher Studies, Paris. Here is an exposition of Buddhism conceived in a resolutely modern spirit by one of the most qualified and enlightened representatives of that religion. The Reverend Drive W. Rahula received the traditional training and education of a Buddhist monk in Ceylon, and held eminent positions in one of the leading monastic institutes, Hirivana, in that island, where the law of the Buddha flourishes from the time of Asoka and has preserved all its vitality up to this day. Thus brought up in ancient tradition, he decided, at this time when all traditions are called in question, to face the spirit and the methods of international scientific learning. He entered the Ceylon University, obtained the B.A. Honours degree, London, and then won the degree of Doctor of Philosophy of the Ceylon University on a highly learned thesis on the history of Buddhism in Ceylon. Having worked with distinguished professors at the University of Calcutta and come in contact with adepts of Mahina, the Great Vehicle, that form of Buddhism which reigns from Tibet to the Far East, he decided to go into the Tibetan and Chinese texts in order to widen his ecumenism, and he has honored us by coming to the University of Paris, Sorbonne, to prepare a study of Asanga, the illustrious philosopher of Mahina, whose principal works in the original Sanskrit are lost, and can only be read in their Tibetan and Chinese translations. It is now eight years since Dr. Rahula is among us, wearing yellow robe, breathing the air of the Occident, searching perhaps in our old troubled mirror a universalized reflection of the religion which is his. The book, which he has kindly asked me to present to the public of the West, is a luminous account, within reach of everybody, of the fundamental principles of the Buddhist doctrine, as they are found in the most ancient texts, which are called the tradition, Gama, in Sanskrit and the canonic corpus, Nikya, in Pali. Dr. Rahula, who possesses an incomparable knowledge of these texts, refers to them constantly and almost exclusively. Their authority is recognized unanimously by all the Buddhist schools, which were and are numerous, but none of which ever deviates from these texts, except with the intention of better interpreting the spirit beyond the letter. The interpretation has indeed been varied in the course of the expansion of Buddhism through many centuries and vast regions, and the law has taken more than one aspect. But the aspect of Buddhism here presented by Dr. Rahula Humanist, rational, Socratic in some respects, evangelic in others, or again almost scientific has for its support a great deal of authentic scriptural evidence which he only had to let speak for themselves. The explanations which he adds to his quotations, always translated with scrupulous accuracy, are clear, simple, direct and free from all pedantry. Some among them might lead to discussion, as when he wishes to rediscover in the Pali sources all the doctrines of Mahina, but his familiarity with those sources permits him to throw new light on them. He addresses himself to the modern man, but he refrains from insisting on comparisons just suggested here and there, which could be made with certain currents and thought of the contemporary world, socialism, atheism, existentialism, psychoanalysis. It is for the reader to appreciate the modernity, the possibilities of adaptation of a doctrine which, in this work of genuine scholarship, is presented to him in its primal richness. Preface All over the world today there is growing interest in Buddhism. Numerous societies and study groups have come into being, and scores of books have appeared on the teaching of the Buddha. It is to be regretted, however, that most of them have been written by those who are not really competent, or who bring to their task misleading assumptions derived from other religions, which must misinterpret and misrepresent their subject. A professor of comparative religion who recently wrote a book on Buddhism did not even know that Nanda, the devoted attendant of the Buddha, was a bhikkhu, a monk, but thought he was a layman. The knowledge of Buddhism propagated by books like these can be left to the reader's imagination. I have tried in this little book to address myself first of all to the educated and intelligent general reader, uninstructed in the subject, who would like to know what the Buddha actually taught. For his benefit I have aimed at giving briefly, 
and as directly and simply as possible, a faithful and accurate account of the actual words used by the Buddha as they are to be found in the original Pali texts of the Tipitaka, universally accepted by scholars as the earliest extant records of the teachings of the Buddha. The material used and the passages here are taken directly from these originals. In a few places I have referred to some later works too. I have borne in mind, too, the reader who has already some knowledge of what the Buddha taught and would like to go further with his studies. I have therefore provided not only the Pali equivalents of most of the key words, but also references to the original texts in footnotes, and a select bibliography. The difficulties of my task have been manifold, throughout I have tried to steer a course between the unfamiliar and the popular, to give the English reader of the present day something which he could understand and appreciate, without sacrificing anything of the matter and the form of the discourses of the Buddha. Writing the book, I have had the ancient texts running in my mind, so I have deliberately kept the synonyms and repetitions which were a part of the Buddha's speech as it has come down to us through oral tradition, in order that the reader should have some notion of the form used by the teacher. I have kept as close as I could to the originals, and have tried to make my translations easy and readable. But there is a point beyond which it is difficult to take an idea without losing in the interests of simplicity the particular meaning the Buddha was interested in developing. As the title What the Buddha Taught was selected for this book, I felt that it would be wrong not to set down the words of the Buddha, even the figures he used, in preference to a rendering which might provide the easy gratification of comprehensibility at the risk of distortion of meaning. I have discussed in this book almost everything which is commonly accepted as the essential and fundamental teaching of the Buddha. These are the doctrines of the Four Noble Truths, the Noble Eightfold Path, the Five Aggregates, Karma, Rebirth, Conditioned Genesis, Payakasamapta, the Doctrine of No Soul, Anatta, Satipanna, the Setting Up of Mindfulness. Naturally there will be in the discussion expressions which must be unfamiliar to the Western reader. I would ask him, if he is interested, to take up on his first reading the opening chapter, and then go on to chapters v, 7 and 8, returning to chapters 2, 3, 4 and 6 when the general sense is clearer and more vivid. It would not be possible to write a book on the teaching of the Buddha without dealing with the subjects which Theravada and Mahina Buddhism have accepted as fundamental in his system of thought. The term Theravda Hnena or small vehicle is no longer used in informed circles could be translated as the school of the elders, Theras, and Mahina as great vehicle. They are used of the two main forms of Buddhism known in the world today. Theravda, which is regarded as the original Orthodox Buddhism, is followed in Ceylon, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos and Chittagong in East Pakistan. Mahina, which developed relatively later, is followed in other Buddhist countries like China, Japan, Tibet, Mongolia, etc. There are certain differences, mainly with regard to some beliefs, practices and observances between these two schools, but on the most important teachings of the Buddha, such as those discussed here, Theravada and Mahina are unanimously agreed. It only remains for me now to express my sense of gratitude to Professor E.F.C. Ludowick, who in fact invited me to write this book, for all the help given me, the interest taken in it, the suggestions he offered, and for reading through the manuscript. To Miss Marianne Montu, who went through the manuscript and made valuable suggestions, I am deeply grateful. Finally, I am greatly beholden to Professor Paul demi Evely, my teacher in Paris, for his kindness in writing the foreword. W. Rahula Paris July 1958. Tumani. Sabadna Damadna Jinti. The gift of truth excels all other gifts. The Buddha. The Buddha, whose personal name was Siddhartha, and family name Gotama, lived in North India in the 6th century BC. His father Sadodana, was the ruler of the kingdom of the Sakyas, in modern Nepal. His mother was queen. Maya. According to the custom of the time, he was married quite young, at the age of 16, to a beautiful and devoted young princess named Yasodhara. The young prince lived in his palace with every luxury at his command. But all of a sudden, confronted with the reality of life and the suffering of mankind, 
he decided to find a solution the way out of this universal suffering. At the age of 29, soon after the birth of his only child, Rahula, he left his kingdom and became an ascetic in search of his solution. For six years the ascetic Gotama wandered about the valley of Ganges, meeting famous religious teachers, studying and following their systems and methods, and submitting himself to rigorous ascetic practices. They did not satisfy him. So he abandoned all traditional religions and their methods and went his own way. It was thus that one evening, seated under a tree, since then known as the Bodhi or Bo tree, the tree of wisdom, on the bank of the river Naranjura at Buddhaya, near Gaya in modern Bihar, at the age of 35, Gotama attained enlightenment, after which he was known as the Buddha, the enlightened one. After his enlightenment, Gotama the Buddha delivered his first sermon to a group of five ascetics, his old colleagues, in the deer park at Isipatana, modern Sarnath, near Banaras. From that day, for 45 years, he taught all classes of men and women kings and peasants, Brahmins and outcasts, bankers and beggars, holy men and robbers without making the slightest distinction between them. He recognized no differences of caste or social groupings, and the way he preached was open to all men and women who were ready to understand and follow it. At the age of 80, the Buddha passed away at Kusinara, in modern Uttar Pradesh in India. Today Buddhism is found in Ceylon, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Tibet, China, Japan, Mongolia, Korea, Laos, Formosa, in some parts of India, Pakistan and Nepal, and also in Soviet Union. The Buddhist population of the world is over 500 million.